All right, it's already half a minute past 12, so we, may, we can start our fourth plenary session during which we enjoy presentations by our industrial partners. Starting with Marek Gabriš, president of the management board and co-owner of the IUT group. Uh, Mr. Marek Gabriš is an engineer, entrepreneur and innovator he has been involved with the IUT group's operations for over 20 years. As a last standing vice president, co-owner, and since 2021, the president of IUT and majority owner involved in the group global operation activities. IUT is an engineering company with 1,000 employees and 600 engineers delivering complex automation and robotic solutions worldwide. IUT headquarters are in Gliwice, Poland, with local competence centers in the USA, Canada, Germany, Romania, India, and China. IUT provides automation integration, software development, machine building, robotized production lines, automata automated warehousing, uh, digital twin for assess management, uh, IoT systems, and more. The company helps to build cutting edge technologies and implement innovative products. Mr. Gabrich, the floor is yours. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm proud to represent an engineering uh, back office of this region. Uh, and uh, uh, instead of sharing uh, a specific innovations, I'd rather focus today on a general challenges we face with introducing the true innovation into the industry. Uh, IUT is an engineering company, an integrator with a global outreach uh, we work uh, with customers mainly from automotive, but uh, also covering other uh, specializations like electronics, chemicals, and uh, for past 31 years we've done over three and a half thousand projects. Uh, in terms of the uniqueness of IOT, apart from its global outreach and local competence centers, uh, we provide, we have quite a wide range of specializations in-house. So unlike other automation companies that usually focus on PLC Robo Plus uh, mechanical design, uh, we have uh, in, internal teams uh, covering IT, IoT, chemical, so technology, and provide full-fledged solutions for the factories. Uh, one of them is central logistics, automated warehousing. We have mechanical, <coughs> electrical, electronics workshop. And right now on a hype is Industry X that I will share some ideas about. And uh, having all this competency in-house allows us to provide true differentiation when it comes to delivering innovation into the factory. Yes, and sometimes we have an ambition and we have internal capacity to develop some innovative products. However, they are very well specified in what we do because an integrator, so our core operation, has to be very transparent in terms of IP rights. Customers share with us their technology, secrets, they can say, and for that reason, we have to very transparently transfer all that we manufacture, all the added value also on IP rights when it comes to the projects. But sometimes we allow ourselves to divert and do our own technology. And that comes also from the fact that engineering, as we say it in IOT, is 80% craft and 20% art. And those more inclined into art, we try to uh, build some new technologies. Uh, so they are well defined and a little separate from our core operation. 
one of the solutions that is growing fastest recently is uh, automated mobile robots uh, with state-of-the-art software fleet manager plus highly customized platform so we can say practically for every project we can deliver a very unique intralogistic solutions uh, and that that's uh, the value that customers particularly in North America appreciate but Today, I wanted to give you my observations and probably the experience of the company of uh, challenges we face with transferring innovation. And uh, therefore, let me answer uh, in this brief presentation how to improve production process with new innovative technologies. Uh, and let me call it an ultimate question of what we do. Uh, first of all, we have to understand the situation on the market. Factories are normally not very high profit business. They are going on large volume with relatively small margin. Therefore, they are very sensitive for disturbances on the market. Supply chain was uh, quite affected two years ago. Workforce shortage is what we experience all the time. Economy slowdown and demand fluctuations, which means sometimes and surprisingly, we get like double, triple the demand. And uh, in half a year, for no apparent reason, we get half of the normal demand. So uh, we have to be very flexible uh, as a factory. And uh, also, uh, the products that we used to manufacture in large batches tend to be much more customized. Generally, the word is going into customization. And that makes quite a challenge for factory because they have to do retooling or configuration change each time they, they manufacture. So you might be surprised, but let's say the furniture company doing weekly almost 200,000 pieces of furniture, the normal batch is 100. That gives an idea how frequently they have to change, reconfigure, etc. And that challenges bring to the very principal challenge for factory. First of all, core technology is not industry for zero. I'll define what is industry for zero in a minute. However, we have to face the truth. Uh, this is the core technology that matters the most, and it's difficult to attract the attention to do something small on a site, even though it may be very profitable, because it refocuses the key personnel. On a factory, the planners or let's say the project supervisors are few. And therefore factory, apart from financial restriction, they can do only limited number of projects at a time. And therefore, even if you have very profitable project, but on a small scale, it will not attract the attention. And that's the, the challenge we have to address with, for instance, clustering projects to make something bigger. So that gives a substantial revenue saving or value add to the production. And also, uh, even though they will not accept that, uh, on, uh, in factories there is shortage of high-tech skills. And uh, you can easily understand that customer will never acknowledge the shortage of competencies. But sometimes this is the main blocker to delivering uh, the new solution. And how to do it? I will give you an insight on that uh, in open book policy. Uh, also, a very big challenge is the terminology. Actually, this is something that academia, technical university institutes can address. But in my opinion, they are not doing it. So first, there is a language hype, and vocabulary is used quite randomly because it just sounds fancy. And no one cares that much about the content of what we want to transfer. So uh, we, when we say, for instance, WMS, it will have very many meanings. And it is surprisingly very ambiguous terms if you start talking to customers. So it takes at least 15 minutes talking to customer to identify what we mean by that term. Second is uh, false perception of underdevelopment. That's uh, global. I've been visiting factories all around the world. I can tell you one thing. Wherever I go, customer feels he's 
factory is very backward. And you can go to highly automated automotive factories that AGVs are everywhere. You, it's hardly to pass not uh, by the robots. So there are thousands of robots, hundreds of AGVs, everything automated. And before they let you in the factory, they say, I know we are a little old fashioned. And why that comes? Because there is a disjointment because the media that have to surprise and because of media, everyone thinks that AI is common. No, it is not. And on the other hand, the reality. And I can tell you, I've seen at least few factories which n with not a single robot in USA, which in Poland doesn't happen anymore. So y the world is not as it seems. And we can say that factory owners are rational and the level of automation is just right for the operation they are in. I wouldn't judge, and that is a common misunderstanding uh, in the discussion. Uh, the ambiguity I mentioned, I also see the trend, particularly in IT companies, to do a land grab. So I mentioned WMS. You would be surprised, but sometimes companies doing WMS will say, oh, by the way, we are doing mass as well. And I say, no, no, you are not doing mass, don't say it. But they, they tend to see the market as quite empty, wild, wild west, west. So, oh, we have our IT guys in the back office, they will do it what customer requires. And that is one of the blockers for growth because many companies that are unopt to develop complex system, they are taking the whole package and then it's a big failure for customer. So understanding what you do and what you don't do is key. And of course, standards are not there. Standards are at least few years behind, so we see it's an early stage. We have, a, we have been in other industry where the standards uh, manage to get on time. Uh, it is smart metering, where actually you have standards, but let's say 20 years ago it was this kind of situation as well. But I, I firmly believe the standardization, good practices, they will uh, be popular in few years. Uh, factories are very conservative, and that makes uh, any change a revolution, which is a little challenge. Uh, I try not to use the word innovation in front of customer. I think it's a pejorative word, and uh, frequently get the feeling that customer says, oh, have it tested somewhere else and bring me when it's a mature solution. That's the word innovation, the connotation it brings. So. Uh, this is not necessarily what we want to deliver. Even though we are firmly sure it's a high-tech and perfect solution, I recommend to make it more on a sly, pretend it's just, no, no, it's just a well-proven standard system, nothing else. You can imagine this turn conven convincing customer that wireless sensor can work is a challenge. So even though they have sell for 25 years in their pocket, they still seem to, that the sensor talks to the software somewhere else is a miracle. And that's a big problem because, of course, it's a reliability. Faraday cage is one of the most widely used uh, word by those who have no idea about antenna tuning. And uh, mm, mm, PLC input is, of course, something that costs at least $1,000 taking all together. So that is also a blocker. And it's a big challenge, I can say, about bringing these new technologies uh, because they also send, tend to be non-safe, non-secure, consent. And by the way, on most of the plants, when there is IT deployment on the shop floor, you'll be surprised how many dongles there are in the back of the servers. So it's better to pretend we don't see it than actually address it in the proper manner. Uh, so, what is the solution? Because so far I mentioned a few problems. One of the solutions is the methodology we work with customer. I would call it a fostering te a methodology, which means we try to make customer comfortable with the situation that he comes in a new area, that he has no time to do it actually, but he, has, he, know, he knows he has to. And uh, we have all good tricks from IT, and this is where we can use it. First is agile methodology, which means we have no specification what is the outcome, what is the final result. 
and yet we go into the project. We start doing and say, okay, let's do the first stage and then we'll review the requirements, make them more concrete. The, this is going quite far out of the comfort zone for most of the customers. Second is an R&D. Uh, many projects, particularly for machine buildings, uh, they are difficult to find a supplier because no one wants to get into the project with technology challenge. It's very risky, and customers are unwilling to take the uh, responsibility on themselves or share the risk. Uh, I usually ask the first question, are you ready for R&D project? And they say, oh yeah, yeah, of course we are. I say, okay, that means you will pay for any well-documented failure that we have in a project. And it's all, but always better to say it out loud. Then, of course, it's all staged. So no chance to do something that lasts for a year or two. We have to do it in sprints. So again, the all good agile tricks and give customer the chance to get uh, deliverables frequently as possible. One of the uh, approaches I found very useful is an open book approach to customer. I will elaborate in, on that. One of, the mes, uh, my, one of the most important part of it is a good communication, and you have to be trustworthy in that. So it gives uh, quite a ease for, for the challenges you bring. It, you have to allow customer to utilize all that has been delivered. Also, common problem is trying to, oh, that's a crap, remove it and bring my good stuff. No. You have to understand that someone made this, uh, this decision before and customer never makes mistakes, which means he has selected the best solution at given time. So our responsibility, giving delivering new solution, is to try to utilize what has been delivered even if it brings some inefficiency to our solution. That's the rule. Of course, if it's rainbows, 10 years old plus, you don't care, but if it's uh, something bought three years ago, I highly recommend to integrate rather than eliminate. And what I mentioned in the beginning, uh, petty things uh, will get petty attention even if the return on investment is two weeks. So it's just about packaging things and if this is uh, a challenge for customers to find CapEx, if, if we have financial resources to give him it as a service, it is again quite a removal of stress for um, getting into the new solution. Uh, most of the innovation that we want to bring into, uh, into factory right now is IT related. And if you ask me what is industry for zero, it has one meaning. It is ITC into industry, nothing else. But you cannot use the same terminology as you use for IT because automation people would be very uncomfortable understanding that they use the same thing as the Python guy in his cozy armchair. This is a different type of guys. So try to, th that's why they have invented this uh, I industry for zero buzzword. It's no, for me, it's, it has no deep meaning. It's just a cluster of technologies that we know well. So first of all, IT is a blocker for deploying big systems nowadays. Recently we were in a big tender in big Polish company for fully robotized line. And it was a big, very big project, end to end, with even mobile tools, so tools were coming uh, on a mobile platform, so, uh, so flexible layout, quite a big challenge. However, customer analyzed the project, he understood everything was considered stations, mobile robots, control system, but the IT he couldn't get. And the IT was a must for this kind of application. And he resigned. He bought 50 separate stations, which is a step back in my opinion. The same amount, but he couldn't take a challenge of integrating everything under IT. And that is, in my opinion, the biggest blocker. Sometimes we feel like, customer feels like by buying five sensors, he get entire back office. And I explained, like with a power plant one and a half, one and a 50 years ago. So, just imagine you want to put the bulbs to work second shift. 
However, you need a power plant. That power plant can't sell us. It will never substantiate the investment of these few bulbs. But yeah, we know, okay. Then there will come machinery, uh, all the tooling, it's all the, it's powered by energy. But imagine the first, the first step you have to make, only for have a light on, on uh, some facility. So it, it's the same right now with IT. They have to move to the larger extent into IT to build the proper information flow, digitization, otherwise they won't be able to utilize both of the innovative solutions on the market. Uh, and um, all, uh, uh, also what I mentioned about uh, customization, version management is a huge challenge. So customer understand that bringing the product into fully automated mode is reasonably simple, but when he has to switch products few times per day and the next day there will be a new product not envisaged on the start of the project, they are lost. So all this uh, CAD CAM integrated into PLM, PDM is already a must and, uh, and it's a huge challenge for, for making all in digital for factories. And this is the challenge to make the uh, factory environment uh, capable of uh, handling this f fast changing product spec. And I give you a few examples of, of this kind of uh, solutions that are like without IT you cannot imagine doing them. Intralogistics, this is on a hype as well. Uh, so you have automated buffers for material and, and final products. Uh, Intralogistics uh, handled by mobile robots. So loading, unloading the production line is automatic. Uh, probably the truck loading, unloading is manual, but it is the only part manual. You can imagine the level of traceability of all the goods that are transferred in between those places. With the scale of flow, having these buff buffers slow, uh, small, you cannot manage, not with papers or stuff. So this is one. Dynamic factory layout. F future factories will not have a layout at all. It will all be automatically generated based on the demand stations, availability of machinery, tools, everything will be f flexible and mobile. This is, you cannot imagine having extra level of flexibility on the plant right now. Also what we see that uh, end of line testers uh, will be obsoleted. So testing is taking already for car industry more than half of the time of the production. And one of the solution is just since we manufacture, let's do it in a line. And that makes a challenge because you have to install lots of tools Lots of uh, communication because the test of the car is in between 10 and 40 gigabytes of data, one car, to have it tested. All systems. How, can you want, how do you want to exchange it? And the attack time is one minute. So you have to transfer that kind of amount from the car wirelessly on a plant in a safe manner. That gives some idea about the challenge. Open book policy. Yeah, the only option to go into this level of stress for customer is to say he will be satisfied. Uh, and this trust, uh, first he earns by making the team together and having one aligned objective. So if our team has the same objective of customer objective, it removes lots of problems. Second is uh, a very flow, uh, smooth communication. We have to document everything, communicate frequently, give even illusion of decision making to customer. But that makes him more involved and he should understand how the system is going at least week by week. I frequently uh, give our customers the feeling that we will transfer the know-how. If you safeguard the know-how, it becomes a magic and factory team is not satisfied with that outcome. They know they are underqualified. They want to get qualifications because it's a little backwards uh, industry. So giving them the uh, assurance for training, for uh, giving them, you will be independent. I'll give you everything. You want source code, you get source code. For instance, we are the only company that shares PLC code and cut design with the customer. E plan anything they want, they get it. I say, it's your system. You ask me when you need a help but not for menial tasks. You can do it by yourself. And that brings the upgrade for the personnel. That's how 
to get the personnel on your side. And also empowering them, saying, your guys are great. They can do it. This is one of the decisive points in some cases. Also, we try to go into financial model. I usually say to customers that I can compromise anything but my margin. And uh, on the one hand, it's a joke, but on the other hand, it's true. And that makes customer, if we go in open financial model, it's very convenient for them to select next steps, have a trade-off on financial side as well. I think it's fair, it's complex, it's a big challenge for organization, but uh, long term, because for instance of re removing the risks for price fluctuations is very profitable, is very beneficial for both parties. And also, all, all that we do, we give sort of an insurance, at least moral one, let's say, that will always take responsibility for the system we've delivered. And that we do. Uh, I already mentioned that it's equally important to say what we do and what we don't. And in my opinion, some companies make this mistake, but they say uh, they are very introverts and say, I, I, or we, 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 and then they don't see the other parties. The ecosystem is complex. Be partner to anyone. The more friends you have, the more likely you will get approved to customer. So find partners, give them to have it so that they have a chance to do the, uh, to earn, to have some projects as well, and you will do your stuff uh, as part of the big package. Uh, it's, there are some startups, this is, I, I sometimes consult startups, this is one of the biggest problems of car startups. If they have low money and high ambition, the only option is to go razor sharp uh, require, uh, area of specialization. Razor sharp, all the rest you take from the market. If you go, oh, we'll do everything, it's just immature and no one trusts it. So uh, integrate with everything you can and find those with whom you integrate as your partners, stimulating their, let's say, cross sales as well. Uh, and that's what technical convergence is. I mentioned this in the title. It's just bringing good practices from one area to the other, as simple as that. So. I don't say we have innovative solutions, we just converge technology that has been used here, there, and just bring it to factory. But no, no, it's not new, it's very well proven. I can show you some parallel areas of some parallel industries where, where it's used. And finally, uh, if you want to bring into the factory innovation, my personal feeling is you need an integrator. Yes, you can say I'm the integrator as well. But we also do the innovative products. And the, as this, uni, uh, uh, this carve-outs, this uh, innovative startups, you can call it, are a little independent, you can say that we are using IUT as an integrator to start our journey on the market. And the integrator is someone whom customer very well understands. Because first thing that differentiate savvy technical company from integrator is that when our guys come on site, they just smell the oil, hear the noise and say, oh, finally home. And customer sees it in your eyes. And if you send these kind of guys to the factory, they will, customer will follow. So that's where bringing innovation should give also the comfort to the customer. And integrator brings comfort. He understand the plant, he knows the technology, he, he, he understands mechanical, electrical, PLC, he will do extra work, just as a courtesy sometimes, it's just a good buddy to have on the plant. And if he brings a partner with innovation, it's much more likely to succeed. Uh, yeah, and sometimes we, we recommend to give some small extra to customer, uh, if you go on site, you see that there are many things to be done and uh, just not feel your project only, but go a little wider. That is highly appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Thank you, pr Mr. President. I have noted one of your statements that the failure well documented is a success. I reserve the right to, to cite it to my students. 
<laughs> and for now, we have uh, time for one or two questions. Uh, if no questions, so allow me to ask for, for another interesting thing that I have noted. You said that um, engineering is 20% of art. Uh, how do you think we can encourage um, development of art skills in future engineers? Art for me is creation rather than uh, non-engineering art, let's call it. So we create, we use technology to create something new uh, and uh, normally the, the business doesn't pay you for it. But uh, you can make this advancement a very petty, a very small one in whatever you do. But sometimes uh, it's possible just to move out and, and try and take the challenge and do it officially. So this is how we take out innovations. We have lots of innovations, but only some of the areas we address as, as separate entities. We carve out. And this is when this art factor, this creation, this urge to create, to bring the uh, word forward, is uh, so strong that we want to give this opportunity to people, to our engineers. But this is their road, uh, way, rather than ours. We see that some people are more inclined to innovate, to do things out of the box, new things. They are, if, they, if they know that no one has ever done it for them, it's just, oh, so probably it's a good idea to do it, finally. So I encourage, but first I would recommend to learn the tough part. So <laughs> sure, sure. And then challenges. Thank you very much Thank again. I would like also to encourage you to visit the Ayut company who uh, kindly um, uh, allowed us to visit uh, the company. So we have a trip organized on Thursday morning. Thank you very much. And now. Uh, now our second presentation by uh, Mr. Zbigniew Gawa from Elvik Solutions and Mr. Krzysztof Sprawnik from Google Polska. Uh, Mr. Zbigniew Gawa is a digital transformation manager and an uh, and enterprise architect. He brings a unique perspective to the table, having successfully led and delivered large-scale IT innovative innovatives across a wide range of industries with a focus on creating cohesive and integrated IT solutions. Zbigniew is passionate about uh, leveraging his expertise in data architecture and governance to drive business value and optimize organizational performance. Zbigniew is also certified business analyst and business process professional with a proven track record of driving process improvements and delivering business value. Krzysztof Sprawnik is a Google Cloud engineer with over 20 years of expertise in the IT industry. He's passionate about using technology to solve real world problems and he has a deep understanding of the challenges and opportunities that businesses face in today's digital age. In recent years, Christoph has focused on cloud solutions and he is now an expert in Google Cloud Platform. He is a highly skilled and experienced engineer and he is also a great communicator. He is able to explain complex technical concepts and a clear, uh, in a clear and concise way and he is always willing to help others learn and grow. Mr. Spignev, Mr. Christoph, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction and invitation. Ladies and gentlemen, our presentation is uh, quite similar to the previous one, uh, but we would like to focus on commercial solutions uh, implemented for many sectors of, uh, of economies. And we would like to focus uh, your attention to the data at the beginning. The data is a lifeblood of uh, industrial revolution 4.0. Uh, point and our journey with, uh, with, with them is starting uh, 
at the bottom of that pyramid uh, you can see on, on the screen. The flood factor, uh, the fl factory floor uh, on the bottom is the source of information. Information provided by the sensors, by uh, automation systems, uh, processes uh, on the side of the factory. The second layer, uh, syntactic layer, is uh, responsible for uh, managing the data and providing in the uh, common format, understandable with uh, another uh, systems able to process some machine learning models and uh, similar, uh, similar uh, solutions on the edge of the factory. But the next two layers are much closer to the business per perspective and needs. The semantic layer is a construct conceptual model responsible for representing the business requirements, business needs, and uh, next layer uh, respons uh, resp is responsible for KPI analysis and machine learning models running on the cloud environment, directly responsible for uh, business needs and business requirements. Uh, this is a holistic approach uh, able to run directly uh, based on the cloud solutions provided by Google. Why we use that? Where, what is the driver uh, to use such uh, approach uh, ready to use uh, from scratch uh, and ready to use uh, on any other uh, economy aspects and uh, different kind of factories. We are challenging uh, by different requirements uh, from consumers, from any devices uh, around uh, surrounding us in a typical life. We are challenging by uh, different aspects of uh, disruption of uh, supply chain, different aspects of uh, shortage of workers or resources in, in, in production uh, environment. Also, we are challenging by climate aspects uh, and sustainability. This is the these are the, the drivers uh, which, are which are focusing us to provide holistic solutions uh, in the cloud, accessible on demand. What is our strategy? Uh, like in previous uh, presentation, uh, you, 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 can, you, can, you can saw, you are trying to fulfill the gap between IT and IoT aspects of uh, digital transformation. This is the main reason uh, to focus on some solutions uh, accessible directly, not the on the plant uh, area only, but generally uh, for all aspects of the data processing uh, generated in the plant, but around as well. We are trying to adapt uh, the technology, IT technology, cloud technology, to any aspect of the production processes. We are try trying to adapt uh, this, uh, this kind of innovations uh, provided in the cloud, this, uh, some kind of services in the cloud to deliver uh, at the shortest time uh, as value, uh, su such value as possible. You are trying to provide some solutions uh, that are safety and uh, security by define. So more details uh, will be explained and provided by Krzysztof. Yeah. So the stage is yours. Thank you. Um, Thanks for the great presentation, by the way. So, so actually, you took some of the key points from my uh, from our uh, <laughs> presentation. But uh, you know, it's like, but it gave me one 
uh, one major thought. It's actually about the removing of the roadblocks. So what is Google doing is actually trying to make, you know, it's like to change or to, to bring the technology uh, closer to the people. Actually, we are doing this for uh, any other um, uh, application, any other systems, any other services that we actually provide. We provide the people with the calendar services, mail services, and we're doing it on scale. So the, the, the whole idea behind that is actually to have the, the same way of, you know, introducing the well-known technologies, as we said, as we heard in, in, in the previous pre presentation, that, that uh, the, the factories are quite conservative and reluctant to, to, to use them, we are not bringing some, something which is really, you know, uh, revolution, uh, revolutionary. It's like it's, <laughs> it's more like, you know, it's like we're bringing all the tested things in scale. I mean, when it comes to, you know, data transfer, when it comes to security, when it comes to storage of the, of the data, when it comes to, to, to manipulation of the data. I'm pretty sure at Google, <laughs> we know how to run data in scale. So that's, that's, that's why we're here. So we are targeting, use, uh, targeting all the many use cases, but it's like it's actually it's like we are trying to get closer to the, to the customer. And then uh, the whole idea behind that, there's a lot of text in those uh, slides, please try not to read them much. <laughs> but uh, the thing is we are trying to make, uh, you know, it's like your products, your systems more smart. And it's actually, it's like we are leveraging the, uh, the, 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 the technology behind the cloud actually to make it happen. So the thing is we want to optimize uh, the supply chain, optimize the solutions, the way we're doing it uh, internally with, with our Google systems, with, with the systems with our customers. And the fourth thing is also to be, and it's like to provide all those services in a sustainable way. So uh, most of our uh, 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 data centers are ca uh, carbon neutral, or it's like carbon, it's not carbon free, it's carbon neutral. So actually we're trying to, to move into this, this, this uh, CO2 reduction level uh, a little bit more. And uh, you know, it's like it's getting uh, closer. So we can skip this, to this one because I'm looking at the time here. So uh, we are looking at the you know, like applying of the technologies that have been developed by Google to have the information about the, the customer, to have the information uh, you know, it's like flowing in and out that can be actually integrated with like between many different systems. Imagine uh, integrating data from the factory with the data from the manufacturing from the data from the logistics, from the data from, I don't know, from, from, from your end users, and actually combine them all together and trying to provide like an input for, I don't know, it's like new ideas, new, 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 new things that, that can be done with the data. It's actually what Toyota is doing with us. It is like they're it's like transforming their car manuals. It's like, how big is the car manual? It's, it's that thick, you know? It's like I have it somewhere in my car, but it's like when you're doing something to your car, are you reading the manual or are you just like watching YouTube? That's actually the question. I'm watching YouTube. But <laughs> the thing is, uh, we are just like, want to go with like with the, with, the, with the fleet of Google intelligent products. And those intelligent products uh, actually involve making your products, your production lines, your uh, factories more intelligent. It's like, it's, it's, it's whether you want to, I don't know, it's like doing, just like it's called visual inspection uh, on the production line. We're actually kind of uh, doing it. So we are using uh, our uh, AI models to look at the products and see uh, in real time whether it's good or not. So basically that's kind of a you know, closed solution for now. So it's like it's, it's, it's finished and it's like everybody can use it. And, uh, and also, you know, it's like uh, we are uh, getting there with like with the, with uh, with providing the, it's like you with the data, I think kind of a Google is known for is like operating on the data, so we are want to make uh, it's like we are making a decisions based on data, and we want to enable you to do it as well. So that's 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 how we want to do it, and uh, because of the fact that you know it's like it all it all had changed since 2020, so so there are it's like. Uh, 
areas of applications that we look into, and it's like starts with, uh, I don't know, um, supply chain, supply chain with, a with, with a thing which we will be talking a little bit more, it's like the manufacturing data engine, and uh, uh, those systems are already been implemented or it's like are implemented right now with some of the uh, um, production, on, on some production lines in some companies, and they're actually leveraging the the, the, the way of, of doing, you know, it's like the, the, the it's like smart business by leveraging the, 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 the Google Cloud uh, um, technology. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And the green infrastructure, digital sustainability, digital sustainability, it's like it's hard word to say sometimes. And, uh, uh, you know, it's like we are combining all of our products you may know of them from the, just like the, the, the just like the, this, 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 this consumer Google. So we are combining them all together. For example, we are combining the data storage with the data uh, um, transfer, with the data um, uh, manipulation, with the, with the systems that actually can be used for, I don't know, it's like the, the last mile delivery system or et cetera, et cetera. So for example, it's, it's really quite, Again, interesting to use the quantum computers to do it's like all the calculations for you know it's like the route planning of the it's like of the dynamic route planning so, so I think that's gonna be the next step uh, within a couple of years and uh, the leading manufacturers are working with us and they are already taking those uh, those technologies maybe not all of them so everybody can you know it's like dip into the pool uh, in a you know in a pace that they want to do it you know it's like whether they want to they jump or they want to go in so that's that's really fine with us, but it wouldn't happen without the, the great in, in industry partners, and with the you know it's like our great great service partners it's like one is here, <laughs> by the way so 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 we are thankful for that, and they know how to implement our technology into the the factories into the the the, the companies into the organizations. And uh, why? So, because we are coming to the three most important slides now, because I like to talk about everything in threes. Oh, sorry. So, uh, why is, it's like, uh, we are one of the top providers. It's like, we are, it's like, providing the, the services for the billions of people. Uh, billions of people. So, basically, it's like, we know how to oper operate at the scale. We know how to operate constantly. We know how to make it running, it's like 24-7, you know, it's like it's, I, I, I come from the infrastructure and uh, I, it's like I, 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 I just saw in this company that actually we're working 24-7, 365 days a, a year. So uh, we got some portfolio of, of manufacturing solutions, so it's like it's the thing about like removing the roadblocks, the thing about removing the roadblocks about so like sending the data, sending it uh, securely, and then it's like managing and storing it for your future, uh, uh, you know, it's like ideas or it's like any data type of combinations. For example, you it's, 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 it's very not uncommon to, to run a, a, an AI model straight from your tabular data in our cloud. So basically you're not transferring data back and forth. You don't have to invest in, I don't know, GPUs, TPUs, whatever you it's like think of. It actually can be done on the spot in the cloud, and I found it. Sometimes it's uh, it's, it's sometimes it's uh, way faster than like to building this whole infrastructure by yourself. If you're going for from from Gliwice to Gdańsk, it's like do you build your own railway track? No, it's like you're not building your own train to do it. So you're just like buying a ticket. So that's actually how how we how we want to be perceived, and also. I still believe that, for example, in the factories, there are some systems that need to stay at the ground. We call them the edge systems, because you basically, you're not taking a taxi with your family to go to Italy for a vacation. So basically, there are some systems that need to be in the factory. We also have some solutions for that. You can use the, the, the AI models on the edge, so it's basically, it's run faster, and it's like, it's, it's everything is pre-trained in the cloud, and then it's like been shipped back to, to, the, to the edge. Uh, sustainability, it's like we want to go with 100% uh, renewable energy, so it's like it's very important focus for the whole company to, to, to do it. Uh, the partnership with industry leading providers, we are just like, w we know what we know, what we do best. So 
and when uh, when we want to you know introduce some new technologies into the market it's basically we're not you know the promising will do everything <laughs> it's basically we are using it's like we are it's like combining our efforts with other companies and we want to join them or it's like get them on board it's like everybody does their own job best so data governance and security it's a really important topic i could talk about this the whole day so it's like the whole day is like the, 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 the because the, there's a one question that goes when it comes to the cloud whose data is it so it is your data basically you are using your data you can use your own encryption keys for storing data it's like we only see you know it's like a, a, a noise it's not the data it's noise for us so basically your data stays within our cloud and it's safe and it's secured by, I don't know, your encryption keys or our encryption keys, whatever. But the thing is, uh, it's not, it's gonna be used only by you. That's the one, it's like important questions I always get this from, from the factories. So it's like, if we, for example, have, I don't know, an AI model based on our data, whose model is it? So it basically it stays in your, in your part of the cloud and basically it's yours. It's your intellectual property. So this is a very important thing. And how to get started? It's easier than you think. <laughs> so basically uh, try to reach us or try to reach our partners and then actually we can think of something. That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the point two and three. So we, we tend to run many POCs, the proof of concepts here, we are trying to run many different, I don't know, uh, uh, workshops uh, that they're actually taking into the consideration. It's like the factory, factory building, uh, factory, factory manufacturing uh, uh, stuff. And, 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 and also we can, you know, help you in like getting up to speed, like trying to get to know the, the cloud a little bit more. You know, I think it's quite important because, you know, it's like, as, as, as it's been said before, you know, the OT people, they don't, like I think IT is like maybe sometimes uh, you know it's like they 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 because they are so focused on running you know it's like the, the production uh, you know it's like for for hundred percent of the time and and that's 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 a great thing so we are here is like actually to interface them between OT and IT people so I think it's gonna you know it's like put some 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 more speed on 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 on, on stuff that you're actually running. And one of the things that I think is it might be quite important, I, and I'm that's almost the, the, the last slide, so I can, I can remove this. So, for example, we got this solution, which is called Manufacturing Data Engine. And the Manufacturing Data Engine consists of two parts. One is a part that actually stays in the factory. It gathers the data. It's like it uses 250 plus protocols. So basically we can attach to OPC, we can attach to PLCs, we can attach to mass systems, we can attach to directly to the devices actually at the, at the, at the ground floor. And then we are like picking up all the data, the, you know, it's like a stream of data, and it's like this stream of data is, is secured and it's being shipped to the cloud. And in the cloud we have, you know, it's like data processing engines and the data storage engines and it's like we are gathering everything and we like storing all the data. Because sometimes we found, and uh, even in Poland, uh, uh, when we speak to the customers, for example, we have some processes that are actually, uh, how to say it, they depend, for example, on, uh, on, on the weather. Imagine if you have, uh, uh, if you're painting the, the cars, so, so it's basically you need to you need to take the the the, uh, the weather into the consideration because when it's hot you don't have to you know heat up the the the, the, the factory floor. It's if, if it's too hot, then it's like you cannot reach your goals when it comes to painting of the chassis. So that kind of a things we can take into the consideration. We can take all the different data into it. We can we can push the data. Uh, and we can try to find actually a patterns because the Google is actually good in trying to find the patterns mm, in the data. So that's that's the whole story. And of course, there are also you know some kind of uh, additional things. It's called, for example, this is called visual inspection AI. If somebody's interested, I can I can show it later on how it's how it's how it's how it operates. So basically, we are able to make this inline quality control. Whether I don't know, it's like whether your uh, your uh, um, 
chocolate factory and you want to have your all your chocolates you know it's like being like going out of the production line it's like in a good color and a good shape and or or everything or for example when it comes to you know packaging we can see if the package is packaged right where if it stays in the right uh, in the right place and everything and and and, and also we can uh, gather this data and see whether what was the root cause of the problem. For example, you know, my engine 37 was vibrating too much two weeks ago and it actually starts started some, 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 some troubles that actually I'm having right now. So actually we, we can see the, the those in the data. And it also it comes with the preventive maintenance as well. You know, it's like we have some customers in Poland that are actually looking into it very much because they want to have, you know, it's like, I always say, because I'm an IT guy, I always want to say that I want to have a, you know, to planned maintenance instead unplanned disaster. So basically that's, 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 that's quite, that's quite uh, self-explanatory. And, uh, you know, we can, we can also look into the data and see if there's a, there are any anomalies in the data. If there is some anomaly in the data, we can make the automated or non-automated decision whether it's like to stop the, the, the production line or make a decision whether it be, I don't know, uh, good or not. For example, uh, that's not the Polish uh, example, but we have one company that's making a yogurt and they are li like low fat and they have to be low fat, but we are trying to, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, predict whether the fat within the yogurt is rising because if you're like putting a uh, high fat yogurt into low fat uh, packaging then actually you're lying to the market so we can make a decision uh, when the fat is is is, is like its uh, fat level is rising we can say it's like okay it's like we stop it now so in 30 minutes from now we'll be having i know it's like 15 percent of a fat instead of five or instead of one that that kind of a thing and of course analytics and it's all done in uh, in the cloud so we have this tool to visualize it and for example we also have some companies in Poland that uh, that they are really you know like hyped about it because they can uh, pick some part of the data that they actually collecting right now and they can they, they can they can show them to the third parties just you know it's like but they can separate the the data from the person that who's looking at it so this is quite important. For example, I have a, I don't know, the engine manufacturer. I can give them, it's called a dashboard. I can give them a dashboard on just on the on my on my engines. And then I can, you know, it's like say, man, you can look into my uh, engine data and tell me if everything's right or something's wrong. And then, of course, we can train the 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 the, the machine learning models that are actually taken into the consideration all the data that it's been collected from from your factory and then we can say it's like whether it's going to fail or not it's like what's the probability because we are talking about the probabilities here and uh, you know it's like the new models right now are making it more even more interesting but i don't want to get into this you know ai hype thing but i think it's uh, one of the tools that we can actually use for for uh, running uh, for running the factory, it's going to make something e some things easier. I know it's like what was the um, last failure on the engine, what was the the action taken in order to make it running all over again, and we can use like we can have this uh, situation that's like the, the the AI is actually helping you, you know, trying to find the solution faster. And uh, one of the things that we did with Elvik is. Uh, we are also combining uh, different, uh, different. We call it APIs, different technologies. For example, uh, one idea of of of, of, our co of my colleague of our colleague was to provide the people in the factory with phones. So uh, when they see that something is malfunctioning, they are not typing in uh, typing it's like all those data into the computer, but they're just like picking up the phones and say. I'm gonna report that like engine 57 is broken or it needs to be serviced. That's it. And so actually, it goes into the cloud, and it's just like being I don't know uh, uh, analyzed. You know, it's like we're analyzing the voice, and then we get the text. From the text, we got the uh, you know, it's like the, the 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 intent. What was the intent? And we can put this intent into the database because basically it's a text.
Yeah, Krzysztof, the, there is another interesting uh, POC. Uh, it was very, very strange uh, because uh, we simulated the, the actions, uh, the operations of a set of biogas plants uh, to prepare the company, the, the group of companies uh, to start up uh, a new line of business. So uh, having no plants, no biogas uh, generation, uh, we simulated uh, the operations of uh, a set of biogas, uh, there was a dozen uh, biogas plants, and next using the infrastructure of Google, of Google uh, we uh, delivered the templates of uh, data processing uh, generated by, by biogas, analyzing them, preparing a dashboards and reports, and building a set of machine learning models uh, to predict the uh, volume of a production and the quality, and of course, uh, some uh, uh, outages uh, for a casting. Yeah. Uh, it was a very innovative project because preparing a business to start up a new business line. Yeah, it's like, imagine, uh, it's not a problem because what struck me down is, is something like uh, <laughs> when we're going into the companies and we are talking with them, it's like how do you manage, you know, like your 600, 1200, 1500, you know, it's like tags or devices within your, within your factory and said, we are kind of, you know, setting it up in order to make it running and then we are trying not to touch it, touch it, touch it much, you know, and we are saying it's like it's, but it's like, you can, it's like, there's a nice song by the Mode. I don't know if you know, it's like everything counts. Everything counts in large amounts. So basically, if we're trying to fine tune all those, uh, uh, all those uh, uh, tags, all those uh, uh, different, you know, it's like potentiometers and everything. So actually, it's like, you can, you can ask yourself, if I, you know, speed up the production line or if I slow it down, what would be the outcome? We are actually trying to, to answer that question with that. And when it comes, it's like it's uh, the end of our presentation. I hope I haven't taken too much of the, the lunch time. If you want to, you know, to, to talk to us, we'll be here for a couple of, couple of minutes. But uh, if you want to reach out uh, to us on, on, on LinkedIn or something, just please, please help yourself here. So it's, it's just great. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions. Presentation. Uh, we have time for questions. Please go ahead, Professor Zinski. I was just preparing a slide. Mm -hmm. I have a question regarding time in control, mm -hmm. because manufacturing processes are about control. The time of reaction, feedback, is important. So how much time it takes to transfer the data to the uh, cloud? process it, and then obviously retransfer the result, the decision to, 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 to the control plan. Yeah, great question. Uh, when it comes to, you know, it's like picking up the data and it's like putting them into the, the it's like insights, you know, it's like, it's like something which is actually working. It's, uh, we are having, we are observing times of three to six seconds now, but I'm pretty sure that's not acceptable when it comes to the, you know, to the fast control. But what we are doing is we are using those data to prepare the m machine learning models that they are trained into the cloud and they're, they're shipped, because it's basically a file, we are shipping them into the edge machine, which is really close to the data. And that's why, you know, it's like in inference of the uh, of the video is something like from 50 to 200 milliseconds. So when it comes to you know to, to recognizing the patterns within the uh, within the products, so dependingly on the model, of course, because like there are different types of models that you look it into it once or you just like not look uh, look in it twice or something. So uh, uh, when it comes to make a quick decision, I believe that we are like uh, sending the the machine learning model back to back to the ground floor that's why i said that you know it's like the, the edge is important and also we are able to make some decisions based on you know calculations on the edge so so that actually what we are shipping it's, it's it goes for you know it's like 
training and testing the data later on, but you, we can make a decision really fast here. It's, uh, that's milliseconds. Yeah, th this is generally a pattern of manufacturing data yeah. engine uh, to share uh, machine learning mo models uh, between the plants. Yeah, and of course, there's a, uh, there's another thing, uh, I don't know if you know, it's like the, it's, it's a Coral engine, it's Coral TPU engine. It's a basically a uh, tensor processing unit. It's, 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 it's a chip, it's available in the USB or M2 or something that can be embedded into the devices on the edge. So actually, I'm using it for, for my cameras in my house. So basically, I'm making the fast decisions locally. I'm not sending anything to the cloud. So that's how okay. it works. Thank, Thank you. you. Any more questions? So I'd like to ask you about the sustainability we we're talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, what actually are green data centers? You said they are uh, zero carbon emission. How yes. How is it made? Yes, it's it's made in a way. For example, it's like it's it's very hard for uh, for Poland, but it's like uh, what we are trying to achieve is, is like we are buying the green energy. That's the first thing, and the second thing is we want to have this. Uh, energy that actually supplies all of our uh, data centers to be to be green to be to be from the green um, sources so also in the united states we have our own sets of uh, the windmills that actually providing the electricity for us and we are the funny thing is we also have some startups there that actually taking care of you know it's like managing all those the um, energy with for the United States, because it's like the, the the excessive amount is is being sold, and then being bought back by, by when it when it's needed, and uh, and the funny thing is we are not, for example, uh, uh, we are not producing uh, I think here in Poland, but we are trying to have just like we are trying we are having uh, uh, the, the the green certificates for for the for the operations of the data center. So it's actually being quite popular with, uh, with, the, with the Polish companies nowadays, so they are actually asking for it, whether it can be done or not. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe a question? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, what is the role, uh, in your opinion, of uh, shallow and deep algorithms uh, used by, by Google? Ah, you now mean the LLMs? Yes, uh, you know, so I'm I'm just the IT guy, so so basically, uh, uh, I'm thinking it's like I would like to use the 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 the, the shallow algorithms for it's like because the basically, for example, for example, shallow algorithm is something which 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 we use in vi uh, in Vertex AI in Vertex AI visual or is like uh, the the visual inspection. It's quite simple. It's like it's it's a type of banana, not a banana type of situation. So basically, we're looking at the products, we see if it's okay or if, if it's not. That's that's the shallow model. When it comes to LLMs, I think uh, the LLMs will be used for you know, it's like providing some insights and providing some some data uh, for the users. For example, I don't know, um, you know, it's like. Uh, one of my examples is actually to understand the, the doctor's prescription and provide it in a way that's, you know, it's like transferred into more structured data. That's the LLM is great for. And actually I'm showing, the I, can, I can show it to you later on because I have it, ha have it working. Uh, we are still learning how to use the LLMs. That's why as a Google, we just pump the brake just a little bit. We are not, uh, you know, it's like we're not it's like giving them to everyone. We want to make it, you know, uh, how to say it, uh, um, it's like we are not pushing them much as the others do because we, we, we see that there's a great responsibility in just like delivering to the market. So, so and but some customers, even from Poland, they're asking, we need more, we need more, we want to have those, we want to have those now. And we're just saying, it's like we need to be sure that they are, uh, how to say it, ethical and that kind of uh, things. But it's 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 gonna be there. It's gonna be used in the factories as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, that's enough of our discussion, and uh, we, we have a uh, a great opportunity to continue it because it's lunchtime. Thank you very much for attending. <laughs>